American entrepreneurs do try all kinds of new things, but sometimes to find really radical ideas, we have to look overseas, in this case to Brazil, where Ricardo Semler runs a company that used to sell washing machines, but now sells all kinds of things. When Semler was just 21 years old, he took over the company from his father. And at the time, Semco was in trouble, in danger of going bankrupt. But Semler turned it around, partly by breaking lots of old rules. Ricardo, like what? Why do they need to have a boss that they don't like? Why aren't they involved in choosing their bosses? Why can't they evaluate their work constantly? Why can't they work to a task instead of showing up at a certain time or selling a certain amount of hours per day? And so the whole essence was saying, why do we have this old industrial South system anymore when we're in a completely different world? Because it makes sense. And the, the first thing you did was get rid of the dress code, which I can understand that simple. But what do you mean they get to pick their boss? When you think about how people work and, you, and someone comes and says, oh, as of Monday, John's going to be your boss, um, live with it. Uh, that's very different from saying, guys, we need a boss, right? Let's go out and see some of these people. And let's all together, who we're, we're going to be the team, let's talk to this person a lot, of, a lot of times. Let's have him come and visit the company lots of times. Um, and then let's decide together. We've had a record of less than 2% turnover a year against 18% in our business because people choose their bosses and they evaluate them anonymously every six months. Workers choose their own salary? Well, that's just an extension of the same rationale, which is if you tell people, if you're transparent and you have freedom and you say, look, this is how much everybody makes in the company, okay? Here's how much you make compared to what you'd be making at another place of work. Uh, and three, here's what the company makes, what we can afford. Anyone who has these three pieces of information is totally able as an adult to choose their right salary. There's no reason for us to haggle about it and negotiate it constantly, et cetera. But wait a um, second. People are I able would to choose find their contribution. I, I would, if I pick my salary, pay me $100 million. That's fine because every six months, don't forget, people are deciding whether they want John Stossel for $100 million. So people then tend to figure out where they belong and make reasonable requests. Which they do, and we've been doing now, now for 30 years, and I don't remember more than a handful of problems in 30 years with thousands of people because adults are very good about this. You give them the right information and you're open about it, they will react accordingly. No one checks expenses. There are no storeroom padlocks. You don't audit petty cash accounts. Don't people steal? If, let's say, you, your, your world view is that 2% of people steal, then 2% of our people steal as well. The difference is that I would have to make the other 98% go through searches and padlocks and all kinds of controls, which slow down the company enormously, take away all dignity in working with these people uh, to find the 2%. These 2% tend to be weeded out by those people anyway, because anonymously, when they put together the people they think they want for the next six months, they'll tend to to do away with the people they, they figure are probably stealing anyway. Now, I'm obviously clueless, because hearing this, I would think, no way this can work. And yet, you've been very successful. Profits are up. The company has grown from a million dollar business to a billion dollars. It's grown tremendously, thousands of people. So there's no issue from that standpoint. It's just that people scratch their head and they say, uh, but why? Why did we have all this other silly stuff? It's not necessary at all. And as we did away with this stuff, uh, we found that we could all concentrate on what we were trying to do. We have to compete. And Brazil's been a terribly difficult environment for 30 years. And we've grown 41% a year by um, saying, let's just concentrate on what we all need to do to make this work, you know? 41% a year, even through the recession in Brazil, in America, Companies have human resource departments that would have a heart attack over this stuff. You don't even have an HR department. That's right. We don't want anybody having heart attacks, so we did away with the whole department.